Holy duck fucking man. Batman! Daddy's back in the house, oh, gone for two okay. days! I missed you motherfuckers. I did, I missed you motherfuckers. And yes, I know, I look like shit. <laughs> I know, I look like an anus that walked into another anus which fell on a razor blade. But that's all good, man. That's why we take these days away so we can pre-plan, so we can get work in the fucking sack. Get it done. Gotta get it done, right? That's what we've got to do, boys. Sometimes we've got to man the piss up and get some shit done. And that's all right because we must prepare for Monday. And on a Monday, the glory will be disposed. We will dispense justice upon the demons of the world with Christmas souls, beginning on Monday morning with demon souls and dark souls 2 and 3 and the blood born and all those kind of things. We're going to kick some ass and take some fucking names, boys. But we could just do islands. I don't know, man. I mean, it's a tough choice. And I think we might have made the right decision this time as we do enter December. The cold, cold nights are descending upon us. Certainly here in the UK, it is black outside. It is all the light has abandoned us because Christmas time is upon us. Christmas time is upon us. I could do an unboxing. You ready? Do you want to see what the kids have got for Christmas? Don't spoil it, though. You've become more than just a mate. Don't you fucking dare spoil it. Look, I'm not even opening it. It better be the right one, actually. <laughs> it arrived 10 minutes ago. Da, da, da. Through a contact. Yeah, dude. Through a contact. Look how shiny it is. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? I got the uh, old Amazon contact in. Managed to secure one. For the boys, yeah, it's not a mobile phone. It's not a mo mobile phone. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Fuck off, I want that. <laughs> you gotta be in the gaming biz. I think you can still buy them. I think you can still buy them, but you, if you're in the gaming biz, then you get to go in and kick ass and take some names. And that's all that matters to me, is that we kick ass and take some names. I hope you're all feeling tremendous. I'm excited for Monday. It's going to be a heavy weekend, but we're going to push on through and we're going to be starting this Christmas month with all the joy we can provide. But that's not why you're here right now. It's not. I've got justice in front of me. I've got RP in front of me. Oh, sweet Moses with the RP. And... Let's do some RP. <laughs> Let's do some RP. It's been too long, man. We've not had our RP forever. We've not had our RP. Our RP fix. We like RP here. We like our RPers. We do. But they do get involved in some Bring weird shit, man. That's weird to us. Military RP. How are you doing, sir? How do, do captain, and all that. How do, captain, and all that. Happy RP for great justice and furious vengeance. We go into RP. It's not ERP. The ERP gets too weird. It's true. The ERP gets a bit weird. I get on average about two ERP stories a week, and they're really. Ju I think people get off on me reading them. I do. I know. I know, I think people get off on it, on me reading them. It's like a voyeuristic thing. Ooh, it gets all, it gets all sweaty. <laughs> it gets all sweaty. <laughs> I think they sat there like, oh yeah. <laughs> Probably from you guys, actually. Uh, my wonderful live audience who uh, gets invested into the ERP. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't, I don't need, I don't need, uh, you know, bodily functions involved with drama time. I don't need it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm just going to say no. <laughs> I'm just going to say no to that. <laughs> Please, I have needs. You're on the internet. You really are. You guys are all on the internet. And people listening to this are also on the internet. This is how it exists. You guys are solid. You don't need me. You don't need me to fulfill that part of your entertainment quota for the week. You really don't. Yeah, I'll leave that to the, the experts. I'm not great at it. I'm not a sultry guy. I'm not. I'm not. I've got a bit of romanticism inside me, but uh, not enough. Not enough. I don't think I could start a secondary channel, which is just filthy ERP. <laughs> I don't think I'd do that. Anyway, the military guild. Salute. Salute. Oh, before we start, I do want to say this. 
I want to throw out an F, a big F, a capital F. An F for all our fallen Mythic Raiders across a lot of guilds who are quickly giving up due to the AP grind. I do want to throw out a big F to those dudes. Lost a lot of buddies recently. Lost a lot of buddies. Not necessarily in my guild, but across many guilds who are on my battle swag and all that kind of stuff who are just done. If you don't know, the guilds now, I am sure many guilds are doing the same thing. Guys can confirm in chat is that are revealing the AP expectations that you will need for the next raid, which is an appropriate thing to do. It's not strange or anything like that. And that's kind of like... Our guild did it, and it also came with like, look, this is the absolute bare minimum you need to do. <laughs> We're serious. Like, this is the easiest way of getting there. Don't stress it. Don't do anything. It came with like this really nice way of looking at it and all that kind of stuff. It's, like, it's really like, please, this is like the minimum we really want you to do. If you can do more, fine, but please don't ruin WoW for yourself. Oh, man. Yeah, our requirement is 38. 38 in my guild is what the... We've got six weeks, I think. Probably six or seven weeks seems about right for when the new raid will launch. And it's going to be 38 is what it's expected. But, oh, oh, it's tough right now. It's definitely tough at the top. It is tough at the top. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. 38 is doable. 38 is doable. It's not that bad with the catch up, but yeah, we're losing we're losing our we're losing our brethren one by one. So a big F to those guys. I understand what's happening. New raid looks good though. So we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, let's get into some fun. Let's have some fun. There's a big F for our boys. Let's get back to our salute. Hello, Preacher. I'm a huge fan of drama time. Decided to finally send in a story of my own. The following is about a heavy big serious military rp guild and the craziness that happened not long after i joined it i started playing wow during legion a new boy a bit before antorus was released and joined the rp world on the worm rest accord Ooh, is that eu or us i'm not sure i've had a lot of experience with rp outside of wow dungeons and dragons bit of pathfinder and the like I jumped into and out of a lot of RP guilds until I was invited. Now, we need a good military RP name for the name of this guild, boys. That's on you, live chat. You can pick it there. At the time of the invite, I had been invited on all of my alts at least a dozen times because of your videos. <laughs> because of your videos, I instantly recognized them as Cesspool Guild. I know exactly what I'm about. The Goon Platoon... The Storm and Guards, mm, Guns and Eagles. <laughs> guns and, I like Guns and Eagles. It sounds very military. Guns and Eagles, Guns and Eagles. Thank you. Thank you, Yell. <clears throat> so I decide. Uh, <laughs> so he recognizes the cesspool situation. However, I'm guildless. And I want the sweet, sweet reduced Hearthstone cooldown guild perk. So I decided. Why not? Why? Because I've told you it's so bad. That's why. What do you mean, why not? What are you doing? Warning after warning after warning. I'm doing my best and you're letting me down. That's why. I keep stressing to you this is bad. Why not? Ah, fuck it. That's how you end up in these. That's how you end up on the show. This is how you end up here in front of me right now. Is this why not fuck it attitude? God damn it, boys. I'm working for you. <clears throat> okay. I would join the guild for a little bit, you know, just, just to get my benefits. I'll just make it, until I hit max level, that's why. I'll join that. I'll do that. I'll, I'll join a, just, just a tiny little piece. Just to, just to try it. Might be good. Who knows? Mike might be full of shit. Oh, look. Mike's not full of shit again. Look at this. <sighs> When I joined, I was greeting, greeted by a staggering amount of welcomes and greetings. Good sir. This guild had 300 members. Crisp. Sign of a good guild. It was definitely a cesspool guild. I said hello and I went on my merry way to 120. Later that night, though, the pink appeared. It was an official invite. My initiation. My RP initiation into the guild. And of course, once again, I thought, why not? 
can't hurt to check out the dude's RP. Why not? Yeah, why not? Let's go down. To Stormwind, I traveled for the initiation, where I took what they said is the oath of enlistment. I knelt. I pledged myself. Swore my character's loyalties to them and to the Alliance. It sounds more epic than it was, but it was mostly out of character rules being explained. And at the end, I was given my official armor of the guild. I know your chat will be wondering, what is the official mock of the guns and eagles? What is the regulation uniform that we were all to wear to be in the guild? It was, of course, the imperial plate set. Hmm. <laughs> Good. Excellent. I was then informed that my schedule would be posted for my guild classes. These would involve a variety of different lessons on how to learn the guild style of RP, the rolling system for our RP combat, and various storytelling techniques. Okay, so remember, we've got classes. Good. Everybody happy? Awesome. Good. These classes were followed by a test. So you better pay attention because there's going to be a test. All right? You better attend all your classes and I'm not posting the notes online. Got to attend your classes. It was very reminiscent of being back in school and listening to teacher drone on and nodding my head at the appropriate moments, retaining just enough to pass the test. I had to pass the test because if I didn't pass the test, I would not be able to join one of the guild's task forces. And the rumor had it that if you were in one of the guild task forces, that's where the real nitty-gritty, deep, serious RP goes on, all right? So you really want to pass the test, all right? You guys were memeing, but you really want to pass the test. Otherwise, you can't be in the task force. And what kind of a dick would you look if you weren't in the task force with your imperial armor and no task force? You'd look like a fucking moron. Idiots. I passed the test. I'm in. I was moved into a task force made up of griffin riders that there were the guild's equivalent of the air force. Now, you might be wondering what were the other task forces and whether or not I'd prefer to be in one of those. There was the infantry task force. Spec ops, yeah? Spec ops. You're not welcome yet. There's another test for spec ops. Navy. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> You want water striders, right? The Navy must be on water striders. This is the only explanation. Medical supply. Now, what was strange is the, there was a woman in charge of the Griffin Riders. A night elf hunter named Light. Yeah. Yeah. Night elf hunter. Hunter. Called Light. <clears throat> I was a cool person. We got along well. The RP was decent, so I never got around to G-quitting like I originally planned. See? See? Look what happened. They roped you in, didn't they? Hooked you and brought you in. And for a while, everything was good. Then I was moved to a different task force. I joined the Guild Recruitment Corps. <laughs> <laughs> And only when I joined the Guild Recruitment Corps, I found out the server's opinion of our guild. Being part of the Recruitment Corps, <clears throat> I was given a very specific macro and told to stand and spam it in general and trade. Sir. As soon as I started doing this, I was almost immediately messaged about how the guild I was in was actually, wait for it, pause, a pyramid scheme. And how it was known on the server that the people in charge of the guild were known to ask for real money donations from their lower teams in order to actively promote the guild online. And that many people in the RP community considered the guild to be a stain on the RP community. I was told that I should go and check this 
on the regulation server forums, right? This is fucking genius. I had never even thought of this, but I love this. Pyramid Scheme Guilds. Smart, man. Smart. This is what the RPers are doing, and you don't even know about it. And not only that, they're cashing in. They're like oil shakes. I love it. I spoke to my guild master. Guild, guild master. The, oh. Wizard 8. <laughs> wizard 8. The 8th wizard. <laughs> It's wi I'm going with wizard because it's more British that way. Wizard. I spoke to my guild master, wizard, <clears throat> about this. <sighs> he informed me that I should ignore it and ignore any messages that were similar to that. Hmm. Okay. Oh, well, that answers all of my questions. Okay. Just pretend it doesn't exist. I like it. I enjoyed the people. I liked interacting with them in the guild. I started to grow a handful of close friends in there. <laughs> I didn't want to believe that this guild could be shitty. So, like a dutiful soldier, like a solid member of the recruitment corps, I ignored the message and any others that I got like it. Because of my clear loyalty to the guild, I was told that I would be an excellent junior officer. I had excellent communication. I was efficient in filling in the official reports I would have to do after each recruiting session. He has to do reports. <laughs> Can we all take a moment? He has to stand in trade chat spamming a macro and then he has to file a report afterwards <laughs> oh my god <laughs> five people whispered me three of them told me that you were a pyramid scheme two of them told me to go and fuck myself one guy said i was a massive gay lord i invited one person the gay lord guy he seemed popping <laughs> A bit of backstory to this. The guild had those who ran RP events and classes fill out reports going over who was there, when the event was, what happened during this event, who ran it, etc. So we could have a clear history of all the RP events we had. Just a mate. So I always had my reports done within five minutes of the events finishing, right? I mean, this guy is just Mr. Bureaucracy. I fucking love it. What a guy. <clears throat> And because I made sure everyone knew when the event was, where it would be held in the Discord channel, I was promoted to junior officer. Not long after that, someone who had the a guild power in character, right? This is in character par, but no guild power out of character, put in an RP restriction for the guild. For reference, for those of you not in the RP world, no one likes being told what their characters can and cannot do. The restriction then. The restriction was on what types of magical characters and what magic they could use and where it was acceptable to cast magic. No one in the guild had broken any of the generally accepted rules of RP, so mo many people rightfully lost their fucking minds. There were various rules. There shall be no casting of Blizzard outside of RP events where it is specifically called upon for the mages. The Warlocks were no longer allowed to summon Infernals. <clears throat> E.G. There were fights in the guild chat, Discord, in character, out of character, and one person in particular. <laughs> it's tyranny then. <laughs> no blizzard, frost mages. <laughs> I love RP, it's so good. One person in particular. Uh, ooh, Rainbow. Yeah. Rainbow was super pissed. I hated this restriction and I still do. But I stuck around to see how the new raid team would turn out. As I wanted to raid more, I hungered for more than just LFR and pugs. 
Rainbow got into a huge fight with the guild master and officers, and it blew up very publicly within the guild. He was kicked and banned. And his real-life partner left with him. And they were found out to be poaching members of our guild. The Guns and Eagles into the new guild they had joined. Because of this, Wizard put in place a communications ban on Rainbow and his partner. There shall be no speaking to those people. And if you got found out, you would be kicked from the guild. I've actually had this happen in a vanilla guild I was in. <laughs> you weren't allowed to talk to people who had done bad to the guild. No whispers, no nothing. And certainly no joining a party or anything like that. Screenshots though, bastards. Screenshots, screenshots of Discord conversations started to circulate around the guild. Where Rainbow, <coughs> Rainbow, Rainbow and Wizard were fighting. We're fighting about Rainbow spying on Wizard and his partner by making an alt in their guild and how he was found out about the poaching. Rainbow was furious about the communication ban put on him, which meant that anyone who was caught talking to Rainbow would be kicked and banned from the Guns and Eagles. Rainbow's partner got involved after Rainbow was put on ignore by Wizard and started threatening to real life sue because of the stress and because of the spying. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine going to a lawyer? Very stressed out. He's got an alt in our guild. He's spying on us, right? I mean... <laughs> It's unbelievable. I can't I can't go anywhere. He could be anyone, man. He could be anyone. I'm suing. I'm suing. I woke up to the junior office chat in Discord blowing up with damage control as major members of the guild left one after the other when the screenshots got out and announcing both in Discord and guild chat how Wizard was a tyrant and how the guild was turning more and more shitty. The leadership and senior members of the Griffin Rider Task Force all left at once. Our guild was now without an air force. That's the real crime. It is. I was devastated. I had grown very close to my team. They were the closest friends in the guild. And not only that, all these people who left were also getting communication bans of their own. The person in charge of putting their raid team together was banned. The PvP inventory leader left. The guild went from the 300 members they had managed to keep. And there's only one alt allowed in the guild, by the, one alt allowed in the guild, by the way. Through their constant recruiting and people leaving, it dropped to 230 at the time of writing. Can you imagine only 230 people in the guild? Fucking criminal, man. I don't know what to do, Mike. I'm sticking around for now. It was a very hard decision. Most of my friends have left and I feel like I'm surrounded by strangers. I stayed for one reason. A girl, of course, who I have a thing for. And she hasn't left yet. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Of oh, fucking course. <laughs> the world is burning around you, but there might be some poon. <laughs> the world is collapsing around me. This fire of brimstone raining from the sky, but maybe there's some poon on the line. Maybe. Maybe there's a chance. There's <laughs> still a chance. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I've also stepped up and volunteered for my corpse. That I would put together a raid team out of those who remained. The majority of which suck major, major dick. People are still slowly bleeding out of my guild. What do you think I should do? Thank you for reading this and I hope you enjoy the story even if it doesn't make drama time. 
I will send you an update later on if the guild lives or dies. Two questions to our official jury. And I do consider you guys the jury. One, stay or leave. This is happening right now from what I can tell. I received this story this week. So this is ongoing, motherfuckers. This is happening right now. Or... <clears throat> also... <laughs> is it worth it? Run, leave, get the fuck out. But Poon, though. I don't think you guys were listening to the story. <laughs> Brexit, bitch. <laughs> I don't think you guys are paying attention. There's a chance at Poon. I really think you guys didn't follow the story correctly. I really don't. <laughs> you guys are too amateur at this stuff. <laughs> stay for the drama, run, stay for the poon. I don't know, man. I don't know. It doesn't sound like she knows who you are, which is an issue. <laughs> All right, let's have some sweet, sweet justice, especially for my classic boys out there. We're going back to a world where something exists that I haven't seen in a long time. DKP. Before the corruption of loot councils, before the evil cabal of sinister players got together and started fucking with loot. Before the horrors, before we had free and soul happiness from personal loot. Mm, good times. Are you ready? <laughs> Well met! A lovely afternoon to you. I've been lurking. Lurkers number one, man. Look at this chat flying by, but still, there's way more lurkers than there are chatters. You guys are the best. Love you guys. I've been lurking, watching your drama time videos on the YouTubes for a while now, and I decided today's the day. Today's the day I contribute to this. Our tale takes place back in vanilla World of Warcraft. Me and my friend are both 14 at the time. We had come from Diablo 2 and had never experienced the magic and majesty of the MMO world before. My first World of Warcraft character would be a Tauren warrior, which I named after an anime character. Considering it's anime, I'm going to let you guys pick. I want, I want some solid Weibo shit. I want some solid Weibo shit to go with it. <clears throat> Ideally, it should end in a she. Ooh. Inuyasha. I like that. Inuyasha. Let's have Inuyasha. Sorry, patrons. I'll, I'll get you. Don't you worry about it. Inuyasha. Inuyasha. I can't even spell it. That's so annoying to say. Fucking weeb shit, man. Driving me mad. Okay, <clears throat> I need one more name from you guys in a minute as well. I need a variation <sighs> on the name Riddick. <laughs> 14, by the way. <laughs> We've got an anime name and a variation on the name Riddick. The two heroes of the era. <laughs> I remember looking at a tour and thinking how huge they were. They were so beef. Tall, muscular. Horns to impale and rip your guts out. Needless to say, I was ready to crush my foes. My friend also shared this sentiment, but he decided to roll a druid instead of a warrior. He named him... Big Dick. <laughs> You're not the most creative bunch, I've got to be honest. <laughs> Big Dick. We'll do it like that. There we go. Big the Dick. Big the Dick. <clears throat> Big the Dick. <laughs> he named him Big the Dick, inspired by the Chronicles of Riddick. And this is where our story began. So we have two 14 year old Taurans going by the names of Inuyusha and Big Dick. We are ready to stomp the Alliance, boys. Do we need any more? I don't think so. Now, you see, my friend has always been a smug bastard. <laughs> He would think himself superior to me and everyone around him. <clears throat> he wouldn't say it, but you could just tell. In the back of his mind, he was thinking it, that he was the best. The picture below is actually 
almost 99% accurate as to what he looked like IRL. <laughs> right. So I want to picture I want you to picture the smugs the strong. This is a guy who's based his character on Riddick. <laughs> <laughs> 14 by the way <laughs> nailed it <laughs> absolutely nailed it oh 10 out of 10 <laughs> hey stop taking the piss you lot <clears throat> he was also cunning it reflected in his gameplay Looking back, I remember the two of us running Scarlet Monastery over and over due to quests in vanilla being scarce. In a very ignoble way, I noticed he was kneading on greens that I'm pretty sure he already had in his backpack so he could sell them for gold. He would do this repeatedly, and as a result, he could afford his mount at level 40. I could not. Wouldn't have been so bad if he didn't start memeing me. Throwing light jabs. Lording it over me for not having a mount. While travelling from quest to quest, he would circle me on his mount while I was running. Asshole. Absolute asshole. The day came when we hit 60. Dungeon run after dungeon run would ensue as the thirst for that shiny, shiny blue armor was substantial. On this particular day, we found ourselves in the upper Blackrock Spire. I, of course, was in pursuit of what? Be quick, chat. I, of course, was in pursuit of my blessed breastplate of valor. I already had every other part of this set this last piece i'm sure would carve my name into legend as a proud and solid member of the horde there we stood the final battle with general drakisath would commence and as expected he would find himself crushed at our feet i quickly checked the corpse there it was i could see it the chest piece that I had pursued for so, so long had finally dropped. There were two warriors in the group, both of us Tauren. I don't know why that matters. <laughs> oh, he's Tauren. Must want the breastplate. Hmm. I knew I would have to roll against him. But I didn't have a worry. I had paid my dues. It was my last piece. I knew that this was my time. That chess piece would be in my bags. It was foretold in my mind in ancient scripts long ago. I was certain that nothing could stop me and so I hit the slash roll command. And my mouth went wide and dry as I saw it before me. A 94. <sighs> Feels good. Feels good. I was thrilled. Ecstatic. Big dick was quick to whisper me gg bro gg but alas this will prove to be a hasty hasty roll the other warrior rolled a 97 i was mortified big dick being big dick burst out laughing and made that clear in whispers calling me a fucking scrub <laughs> I didn't even leave the instance, I just logged the fuck off, stood up in my chair and punched a hole in the wall. Later, my father would ask me what had happened. 14, by the way. I told him I had slipped and fell, hit my head against the wall. In hindsight, I wish I had told him the truth. The face he gave me when I tried to explain that I had slipped and fell and put my head through the wall made him look at me like I was some sort of special needs child. Like I was some sort of spe special kind of genetic failure to faceplant into a wall. Gave us a little image for this. 
<laughs> this is what he uh, thinks his dad saw. <clears throat> it is better than sticking a remote up your ass. <laughs> it is. It is. That's a good call. It is better than sticking a remote up your ass. Good comparison. Smart. Of course, weeks later, I would eventually get the chess piece. But it was after much ridicule from Big Dick, who would bring it up all the fucking time. And quite frankly, it meant little at this point. Our gaze was fixed on something new, something more important, something bigger. Raiding. Big Dick decided he would leave me behind at this point and went on to join the best guild on the server. Druids were shit <laughs> and hard to come by. <laughs> they were pretty uncommon and so they were in high demand for guilds to have those sweet, sweet innovates amongst their roster. He easily walked in without any experience. He would soon find himself decked out in Blackwing Lair gear while I was in a few measly pieces of Molten Core gear. It's not that I was envious. I don't want you to think that. It wasn't about the items he was getting. It was the fact that he just had it so easy. He was so smug about it. He kept telling me how it was easy to join a better guild and maybe I should move on, but little did he know how hard Warriors had it. Additionally, he would never make an ass of himself, unlike me. He would laugh about he barely had to do anything in raids, that he would just throw a few heals and innovate the priests and run around and do nothing. Sometimes he would just go cat farm for trash. But there was one thing. There was that one thing, and everybody has that Achilles heel. He was missing something. Something important. A singular piece of the Storm Rage set. Just like me prior to this, my boy is missing the Storm Rage chest. He wanted the complete set. His friends had the complete set. He wanted it so badly to be a druid like his peers at the Elder Rise in Thunderbluff. People could be proud of him and look up to him to see all those nice shiny letters all glowing without one big grey spot in the middle. But there's a problem, team. His guild is so fucking good. So aces high. They don't even do Blackwing Lair anymore. Old news. They're rocking AQ40. A plan then. He went to the guild website, set up a new event, took the initiative, a Blackwing Lair pug for people who wanted to go from the guild, some alts, and fill in the rest. He did it for weeks. He committed every Saturday morning to farming Blackwing Lair. No drop. One Saturday, weeks and weeks after he'd started doing this, he overslept and missed the raid. Ironically, he'd been up all night with me, running dungeons, grinding gold, and goofing around. And when, of course, he logged on, he got a whisper from whatever, a rogue. Kind of ironic, isn't it? The rogue says. He made that raid to get the chest, and when it drops, you weren't even there. That must feel bad. When I caught wind of this, my sides left orbit. I devoured his tears as he flew into an unbridled rage, whining and whinging. Why would they raid without me? I needed the raid. They knew I needed the raid. <laughs> tasty, tasty tears. Mmm. Yummy. Wow. <laughs> Finally, my friend was humiliated and I had something I could bring up every time he got cocky. Eventually... He would be further humiliated as his house of cards started to tumble. In the Bernie Crusade, we decided it was time to venture into the world of arenas. But because of our gear differences, he didn't want to play with me. Doesn't want to play with me. You might remember back then that every warrior had a particular mace called Storm Herald, which had a chance to stun your target. It also went hand in hand with a little talent called Mace Specialization. You would stun your target an excessive amount of times, in addition to making absurd amounts of damage. Needless to say, 
on one fine day, he was standing across the arena from me. And I got to see the super cool, super good player, Mr. Big Dick, get his turds pushed in again and again. And it was beautiful. Watching his tour and go limp and hit the floor, it made me moist. Moist than I care to admit. After the years of belittling me, telling me I was a meme and shit, it was the best day ever. Anyways, I think I'll end my little story here. Thank you for reading it, Mike. And I hope you found it very enjoyable. But I have included a nice image of me and my Stumherald taking names and kicking some ass. Oh, the satisfaction. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Bang, bang, bang in the face. Fucking hell. Stun Herald can kiss my ass. I refuse to use it. You guys remember? I used the sword. <laughs> I refuse to use Stun Herald. I know. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about me, but I refuse to use it. I outright refuse to use it. Much to the dismay of my arena partners. Much to their dismay, but it was just too cheap. And I did not like. Man did not like. I bought the sword instead. But if you've ever seen The Way of the Warrior, my TBC PvP video... Uh, my p arena partners were very unhappy that I didn't choose to use the mace. <laughs> didn't choose the mace, but fuck it. I don't like the easy ride, man. Moral PvP? Not really. It was a dumb fucking thing to do. It was a dumb fucking thing to do. <laughs> Alright, this one's called Get Fucked. This will be our final story of the day. Uh, okay, we need... Uh, we need one of them guild names from a guild that's kind of okay, but they have like a meme guild name. Not like any hungry. Like a meme guild name, you know. <laughs> you know one of them silly ones? Not Naga stole my bike. Alright? Yes. Alright? None of that. None of that. <laughs> None of that story. <laughs> Average at best. Any thirsty? Ha ha ha. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm having it. Callcraft. <laughs> oh, poor old Alan. <laughs> poor old Alan last night. Oh, man. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> oh, he's so stressed out. Poor man. That poor man was so stressed out. <laughs> uh, it's nice having 11,000 people having a giggle, though. <laughs> Fucking Quinn sat there like a ball. Yeah, he called me too. I just blocked him. <laughs> like two second fix so funny anyway <clears throat> anyway dear preacher hello sir my story of guild drama is unusual unusual sure there was stress fighting hurt feelings but in the end i received a gift beyond my wildest dreams of any level 60 paladin all right so take yourselves back 13 years? Jesus Christ. 13 years to level 60. What is the best thing you could get as a paladin at level 60? What is the absolute gift of the heavens? A gift beyond the wildest dreams of a level 60 paladin. Place you place your bets there. The year was 2005. I was an officer of a guild called Callcraft. <clears throat> Thanks to our open door policy... open door policy callcraft was probably the largest australian guild in the world what a bunch of cunts all right cunts hey we had more than 150 raiders across three concurrent 40 man raid teams jesus christ that's a lot of shrimp that is a lot of shrimp isn't it? Social guild. Social raid, boys. Social guild. Social raid. All of these raiders required a lot of management, I bet. Like most big guilds at the time, we used a DKP system. And this allowed our three teams to have flexible rosters. Alright, so this is the plan. We have 150 Australians, right? Bogans, one and all. To make it work, we're going to have one DKP system that works for everybody simultaneously. And this means 
that people can move between teams freely to their schedule while still maintaining their DKP. That's the plan that we're going with. That's the strategy. I see no potential failures whatsoever. 110% accuracy at all times. <clears throat> now, even though we have three separate 40-man teams of enthusiastic raiders, our progress through Molten Core wasn't particularly good. I am shocked. Your open door policy in three 40 man raid teams wasn't working out. That is bizarre. Huh. Color me surprised. This was partly because of the open door policy. Shocker. <laughs> Many players just weren't very good. And partly because back then, most of our Team Australia played on a ping of at least 500. To be fair, Oceanic didn't come so much later. Feels bad for Team Australia. Feels bad. As Christmas approached, our, pri our primary... Alright, let's ask this question to the chat before I get there. <laughs> what is the progress they're at? Alright. Where are they up to? Which boss is holding back the primary raid team? Not Team 1, not Team 2, not Team 3. Oh yeah, sorry. Not Team 2 or Team 3. Team 1. Which boss? Wow, you all guessed it immediately. I'm amazed. Was do you guys all struggle with Gar? Why? That's so weird. Okay. <laughs> that totally surprises the shit out of me. Who struggles with Gar? Uh, that's elitist, isn't it? I'm sorry. I, I slapped myself. <laughs> but what what? Okay. Gar. As Christmas approached, our primary team one was still unable to defeat Gar. Gar? Why are you struggling with Gar? <laughs> I don't get it. Sorry. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> what do you mean good warlocks? You mean pressing banish? What button? I don't understand. You guys are confusing me. Okay. <clears throat> we could not defeat Gar. I'll take that elitism. I'll take it. The scarcity of raid loot made competition for drops from the first three bosses severe. These were, at the time, extremely desirable items. In our guild, the first three bosses of Molten Core, the, <laughs> a character, even with a few pieces of tear, was worshipped as a god on the Iron Forge Bridge. Some raiders were passing on all loot from the big first three. Who's the first three? I can't remember. I honestly can't. Is it Gehenna's? Dog boy and fire guy. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the names. I think it's it, there's this snake snake man with two snake people, the dog man, and there's uh, fireman. Yeah, the other naga. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's something like that. Razor Gore. No, Razor Gore's blackling lair. Lucifron. Lucifron's first boss. Lucifron Magmadar Gehennis. I think. How's Gehennis come after? Um, yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Rain of Fire. How does it work? I don't know. I don't know. It's a big mystery. Okay. <clears throat> Many of our raiders would pass on everything that dropped to build up their DKP for the one item they desperately wanted. I admit now, I was one of these. I had been in love with the... <sighs> this makes me so sick. Fucking paladins. <laughs> I had been in love with the banana shoulders from the first time I had seen them on Thoughtbot. And I was determined to remain top of the Paladin DKP until that sweet, sweet item dropped. <laughs> Fucking Paladins, man. <laughs> My closest rival was another Paladin named Chiryu. Named Chiryu. He too was hoarding DKP. But that dumb cunt had been late to the raid one day. He was one point behind me. He also had an annoying, grasping personality. And led a group of elite players. Huh? 
Oh, I need to let him in. One sec. Sorry, our front door is locked. Uh, it's broken. No one could get in the house if no one else is in. <laughs> no one could get in the house. It's a bit of a bummer. It's got to be fixed, but it is a bit of a bummer. Anyway. <clears throat> Cheerio, you might remember. An annoying, grasping personality. Uh, led a group of elite players that drove everyone crazy. So being above him gave me all of the smugs. All of the smugs. On our first raid after Christmas... We decided that we had a strategy to kill Gar. We stacked the raid with nine warlocks to banish everything and one for backup should one of them die. Nine warlocks. And on that night, Gar finally went down. The cheering on team speak quickly turned to silence as players checked the loot on that body and there it was. In its lovely bright orange, the binding of the Windseeker. We'd never seen one before. Nobody in the raid had ever seen one before. Nobody in the raid had ever seen an orange item before. There hadn't even been a single Thunder Fury on our server. In fact, it had only been introduced a few weeks earlier. The officers panicked. They never expected to even see it. Raiders alt tabbed to Thoughtbot to gather information. Everyone seemed to learn something different. The Hunters... <laughs> of course the Hunters. Well, here are the facts, all right? The Hunters explained that Thunder Fury was a hunter weapon due to its attack power. The Rogues countered that it was obviously a rogue weapon because it was a sword. And the Warriors insisted that it was a tank weapon because it could slow. Hmm. 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 The debate went on for around 30 minutes, which is unsurprising given the nature of the event. Eventually, we started whispering people in higher guilds. People who had Gar on farm. Whoa. <laughs> Shut the front door. <laughs> Shut the front door. <clears throat> the advice was given. <clears throat> we learned that it was a good rogue weapon, but very overpowered for tanks. I was convinced that we should give it to our main tank. And the officers agreed. The GM announced this decision in TeamSpeak. I don't fucking think so, was the reply from the raid. The green-eyed monster was amongst many. Especially amongst Chiryu's little gang of plebs. They wanted it. It wasn't fair that the main tank should get it. We had already given him gear as a priority and he this petty main tank was in negative DKP. It was favoritism, the raid cried. Maybe he'd been bribing the officers. After all, he'd been given all that might gear and shields. And besides, why do we even have a DKP system if you're just going to abandon it whenever you feel it's useful? The GM repeated his decision. A hunter G quit and started spamming in general chat about how much of a selfish, greedy guild we are. Others looked ready to follow. Panicking, the GM decided to change his mind rather than sacrifice the whole guild to this moment. Fine, we'll do it on DKP. But please don't bid over the main tank unless you know exactly how hard it is to turn this thing into the sword. You also need another binding and a hundred Arcanite at a start. The GM opened the bidding and I held my breath. Chiryu had two rogue friends who had been extremely vocal about their need for the sword. But they didn't bid. In fact, only the main tank bid. And relief spread over me. Why all the hoover? Maybe those guys weren't so bad after all. Maybe they just wanted to see it done democratically as the guild rules state. And the countdown began. Five, four, three, and Chiryu, Domino's bitch, bid all of his DKP. 
the paladin, bid all of his DKP. A groan went over team speak from the GM. The GM paused his countdown. Really, Chiryu? He asked. Yes. <laughs> Was the only reply. The thought of Chiryu lording it over everyone with his little orange item filled me with horror. There was no way I was letting this happen. The countdown started again and with one second to go, I outplayed Chiryu with my one fucking extra DKP point. I slapped it down like the thickest cock you've ever seen. Boom! Right into his face. It was declared I had won. To which I followed up with pass. I want it to go to the main tank. Ooh. Seen this happen as well. Poor form. Poor form. Now, many of you are going to have a, a different opinion on this situation. Is it right to overbid somebody else and then pass it and send it to someone else? Now, you're all saying it's a power play, got them, dominoes, the whole bit. The answer is no. No. That is not how the system works, and that is rife for abuse, people, right? Thank God for personal loot. Rife for abuse. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't outbid other people to give other people items. It's wrong. you got to stand tall. Have you guys not seen Captain America? you got to stand up for your rights, people. <sighs> Pass, I said. Give it to the tank. Howls of protests erupted from Chiryu and Co. I was disrespecting them, they said. Even though, in their opinion, they had carried us to this gar kill. Nine warlocks, by the way. <clears throat> if I passed, they argued, then the binding should go to the person who bid the, least, the next amount, right? It should go to the number two person. If the guy who's won doesn't want it, it should go to the number two person. The GM, like a judge, said he agreed. You can't say you're going to bid on it and then pass it. You can't do that. What to do? What a pickle. Fuck it, I said. I confirmed my bid then. All right, I'll just take it then if we're going to play this fucking game. <laughs> if Thunder Fury was going to be going to a paladin, it wasn't going to cheer you. It was going to me. And the binding appeared in my bag. <clears throat> Chiryu and Cole were furious. Publicly, they were playing it cool. Like, they didn't even give a fuck, mate. Not even fucking ass, mate. It's a shit weapon. Don't even want it, though. Orange, yeah, right. Orange is shit color. You know who likes orange, don't you? Plebs. Idiot. Don't even want the fucking thing. Never even wanted it in the first place. It was just memeing. That's all. Just memes. But they whispered accusations and insults at me for days. I discovered that they had begun spreading rumors about me in the guild. Specifically, that I had bought gold and that I had cheated on the DKP system. In an attempt to get me removed as an officer or kicked out of Carcraft. So I dragged Chiryu's ass into a private TeamSpeak channel. Called him out on his behaviour. He was defiant. We left it at this. As Chiryu said to me these words. The other binding's not even going to drop anyway, you piece of shit. And now you've got no DKP. So go fuck yourself. I just said whatever. The binding dropped two weeks later from Baron Geddon. I got it automatically, of course, having the other binding. And to my surprise, the guild was ecstatic and flooded me with congratulations. Cheerio and four others, however, immediately logged off in disgust before we even went on to the next boss. <clears throat> next time I logged in, they had all G quit. Best of all, though, Geddon also dropped my banana shoulders. And with Cheerio gone, I won them as well. <laughs> By Easter in 2016, I had the second Thunder Fury on the server with a 20 intelligence enchant. <laughs> with a 20 intelligence enchant so I could wear it while healing. Our main tank as it happened did get a Thunder Fury a few months later, so that worked out well. Every day through Vanilla into the Burning Crusade, I received whispers from strangers bemoaning the waste of seeing a Thunder Fury on a Paladin. 
And I went down on the server as the biggest moron ever for having a Thunder Fury as a paladin. But I didn't hear from Chiryu ever again. <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to the end of drama time. There's no way in hell y'all are going to walk past the paladin in vanilla or TBC with Thunder Fury and not call that guy a fucking moron. Greedy cunt, selfish bastard, etc, etc. He's going to get all those goddamn abuses for years. And you know what? You're right. Worth. Fucking worth. <laughs> fucking worth. Ladies and gents, that does bring us to the end of drama time for now. Christmas Souls starts on Monday morning, 8.30 p.m. GMT. That's London time, my friends. And also, the return of the web show should be next week as well. Next Friday, it should be on. And on that show, we'll announce when we're going to sell the tickets for PreachCon. PreachCon will be on the 25th of July, if you did not see the announcements. Last year, it sold out in two minutes. I don't know if it'll do that again. I always get nervous around the time ticket sales are going on. But I will let you guys know then. All right? Mm -hmm. 25th of July, Manchester PreachCon will be going down. There will be, I think, 250 tickets, something like that. Uh, and it should be good fun for everybody concerned. I hope to meet many of you. Many, many of you. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. Do something tremendous with your weekend. It's Christmas tree weekend for me, so I have to be festive and all that kind of good stuff. Yay. <laughs> Yay. But be good, and I will see you, I will see you again. Um, Holla ballers and a bro fist to you all I just realized that we changed the camera Right? Because I'm awesome And didn't fix it in here Yay <laughs> I'm too professional, that's my problem I'm too goddamn professional There it is, good evening to you all And a bro fist because it is Friday Once again And we are at the end of our first week Of our Souls Marathon Our Christmas Souls Marathon With one game crushed Beneath our feet. And another game. <sighs> another game. That mic though. <laughs> I know. And another game. On its way. On its way to standing defeated. At our hands. With the big club. As you can see in that live chat right now. The big club. Demonstrating its power. To the casual player. Not anymore, though. Down with the club, I say. I vote away with the club. I vote away with it. I absolutely do. I say no more will we be burdened by the horrificness of the club. No more. <laughs> no more will we be burdened with this horrendous thing. Decks for life is how we will live our life. It has been a hell of a week has been a very, very wonderful week, and I hope you've had a great week too. It's been interesting in the WoW scene, of course, right now, the 8.1 trailer. Not faring as well as the Avengers trailer. I mean, it's close, right? I mean, it's pretty close. When you look at it from, like, an objective, like, perspective, really, you take out, like, your, your personal feelings and just look at it straight at the numbers... Uh, it seems to be about the same thing, really. <laughs> it seems to be about the same thing. These islands, though, they're better. The islands are better. They are. Come back. Come back. <laughs> come back. Please come back. Please come back. We're all is forgiven. It will be fine. Mega dungeons are on the way. It's all coming. Uh, if you look at it from about 10 miles away, it's like it's real, real small. That it looks pretty goddamn good. It looks pretty goddamn done. Yay, islands. They are better. I mean, in all fairness, they are better. Should have probably launched that way. That might have been a better deal. But that's not why you're here right now. I have a house full of children. You may hear screaming children in the background. There are six young boys and one young girl. And I say young, like five, you filthy bastards. In my home right now. And I've also been informed that apparently when the parents of these children arrive in roughly an hour and a half, they've been told by a certain somebody that we have VR just lying around ready to go and they can all try it out. It's not plugged in. There's no noob stuff installed. I mean, cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool man cool it sounds awesome sounds like a lot of fun right let's move over here so we don't look too weird did you guys hear that
I think something's happened. I'm not even memeing. Yeah, Shalina heard it. Uh, we'll see if we get called. <laughs> if the call comes. If the call comes, we know something's wrong. I think yeah, something just happened. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, let's turn that off. Okay, anyway, let's get on with drama time and have some fun before something horrific happens in my house. And apparently, uh, no doubt, I'll get some, like, Mike, you've got to come and help. You've got to come and help. It's all falling apart. Okay, we have a defense for being shit at WoW. We've all wondered for many years, haven't we? We've all wondered for many, many years when you find those people and they just suck. They don't do anything. They've never done dungeons. They've been playing for 10 years. They're pretty happy that they just count they just capped the character 8 months after the game started. You know? You think you think shit is like mistimed interrupts, right? You think shit. Like if I say to you it's a shit wild player, you think someone who doesn't interrupt properly, doesn't know all the intricacies of mythic plus trash. That's what you think, but I'm talking about the real, real shitters. <laughs> the real painful, painful shitters. <clears throat> well, they've written to me, and they want to be absolved of their crimes. They want to be absolved of their crimes in your eyes as you look upon world of warcraft with your elitist views all of you let us begin pretty sure your wonderful chat a big hairy knuckle bro fist to you all i hope you find my story entertaining even if it's a little long please feel free to skip over anything you like i just want to make sure you understand my milestones that i have traveled Some perspective, all right? You guys are going to need Google for this. When I was 16, Chicago and Led Zeppelin released their first albums. When they were 16 years old, Led Zeppelin released their first album. Okay? Who? <laughs> you don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare. So I'm what your chat might call a little in the older generation of World of Warcraft players. I come from an analog world, ladies and gentlemen. My generation put a man on the moon. Can you guys say the same? And we continue to launch things into space, reaching for infinity. My generation gave you people, yeah, you people, computers and the internet right you people my first computer was a 286 with hercules graphics <laughs> i don't even know what this looks like oh sweet moses okay <laughs> ladies and gentlemen it looks a little something like that. This is Jonathan's, as you can see. Does anybody know what this is called? How many of you have never... Uh, be honest with me right now. How many of you have never seen You've one of these? And isn't me. quite sure what this is. <laughs> How many... <laughs> <laughs> How many of you do not know what this is or have never actually seen one? I've seen it. I've seen one before. Is that a Nintendo? It is indeed the old... It is a five and a quarter floppy disk drive. And they used to wibble. They used to have a wibble. It's the save button. <laughs> it's a save button. <laughs> oh, sweet Moses. It's the fucking save button. <laughs> Soft. Actual floppy. Actual floppy. Uh, I don't think I've seen bigger than a five and a quarter that was still considered a floppy. I really don't. I don't think so. Anyway, her first computer was a 286 with Hercules graphics. A monochrome monitor. <laughs> it's two colors, y'all. Two floppy drives. 
DOS prompt with, yeah, installed DOS prompt. I was the happiest person in the world when I got a state of the art really liked when 50 megabyte hard drive three. for my birthday that year. Fifty, not five, fifty megabyte hard drive for my birthday that year. I didn't upgrade my computer until I got World of Warcraft. You can hear text to speech. Sorry, boys. Fixed. I didn't upgrade it until I got World of Warcraft. I had only ever played Animal Crossing. And Pokemon Rumble, which I didn't even know existed. Pokemon Rumble with my grandkids before playing World of Warcraft. So, to sum, I'm older. That's in parentheses. No real computer experience and virtually no gaming experience. What that translates to is someone who takes longer to react and learn, coupled with not parlaying any of the lingo monk s and starting with close to zero comprehension so now you understand where i'm coming from let me join your group <laughs> let me join your group my kid asked me if i want to oh sorry i first saw world of warcraft somewhere near the end of vanilla my kid was running dungeons on their priest with their friend a pally all decked out in blues bragging that together they could solo two players any dungeon at their level now of course i realize that that's not some kind of super feat but it did sound amazing at the time i stared at the screen it was incredible i had never seen anything like it and they called it a video game <laughs> imp though imp this is what we call, ladies and gentlemen, a video game. My kid asked me if I wanted to try. Of course I did. So they took me to somewhere I couldn't die. So they told me. It was probably a starting zone in retrospect. I'm sure they underestimated my ability to kill myself in this game. They told me such wondrous advice. If I hold down the left mouse button... It turns the camera. The right button would turn my character. And both buttons together would make me run in whichever direction I pointed my mouse. And that's not all. The space bar. Oh, let me tell you about the space bar. The space bar would make my character jump. Then they left me to run around and jump. It was all I knew how to do. I was having a blast seeing this world unfold around me. It was seemingly endless. And all of a sudden, I was jumping, happy as can be. And then I kept falling right off a cliff into the water. I had no clue how to get back up there. So I ran around for a while. And then I had to go and get myself some help. My kids wouldn't let me play their character anymore. I was no longer allowed to play around. <laughs> and that's enough. The ghost is in the middle of fucking nowhere. How did you get here? I've never even seen this part of the world. How on earth did this happen? Like I've never known anybody end up in this situation. But okay, I'll deal with it. I was sold though. Hook, line, and sinker. I have to have this. So I went out for a computer. I decided on a... $300 laptop from Walmart. It was the first expansion after vanilla. And about three months in, my family quit playing by the time I reached level 30. Thus, I was unleashed into Azeroth all alone and had to figure out everything by myself. With the good people of Azeroth left to answer my dumb newbie questions that I definitely had and still have. Now, based on what I had seen so far, I had to pick the most overpowered character I knew of. Ladies and gentlemen, 
It's the Blood Elf Prop Paladin. My Blood Elf Prop Paladin struggled along trying to do just quests and levels. I died a lot. I had no clue. I was a clicker that moved with the same mouse. <laughs> Try and do it now with your hand, right? Most of you have got a mouse nearby. Try and picture <laughs> moving and stopping and then clicking <laughs> your spells. Not even Wazda. We're not even popping a Wazda on this situation. It's just the mouse entirely. <laughs> it's just the mouse. <laughs> At least they don't keyboard turn. <clears throat> One in the bag. One in the bag. <clears throat> I was determined, though. I was determined. And I was having so much fun. So much fun. I had a trial account for six months before I managed to get the game ready for proper time. I had been a level 20 prop pally for about six months. And when I got a full, real account, somebody challenged me to a duel. And somehow I won. Looking back, I'm pretty sure they let me win. Or... <laughs> <laughs> or had been playing for somewhere on 10 minutes there is no other way it could have happened they invited me to come to some arena place they called it to watch him and his friends duel on the way i kept falling off the side of a cliff when we finally got to where he was going another person challenged me to a duel and one shot me and then whispered me to go back home I was devastated. I genuinely remember feeling crushed. I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know why I'd been beaten. I had only just come to watch. I enjoyed watching people do PvP things. I had never said that I might want to be able to do that. This was something that made the crossroads so fun to be in. So memorable. Watching all these high level school players come in and fight each other. In fact, a big moment for me on my journey was when I got to level 30 and I learned Blessing of Kings. I was stand in the crossroads waiting for people to run by or go to the mailbox and I would just bless them as they passed by. Once I saw someone lying in the road. When I put my mouse over them, it said Resurrectable. I had learned that spell, so I found it and res them. And died. I genuinely believed. For a minute. That if I was resing someone. I was giving them my life. And you would die if you rest somebody. That would be a comedy of situation wouldn't it? Like a domino effect. <laughs> I asked what happened. And I found out that by resing someone, I became flagged for the battle. I was rezzed, and they told me to hide in the inn while they finished the war. I thought I would be safe hiding in the inn. And after the battle, the person who had been telling me what happened and why I wound up dead from rezzing said, come to my mains realm. He would make a character. Or I should make a character. Put it in their guild. He got me a guild tabard. He bought me some gear to help me level fast. And then he never spoke to me again. This was to become a trend. People wanting me to go to their realm, make another character, join their guild, and then just leave me to it. I didn't mind so much though. It's just the way things are in World of Warcraft, right? Hey, we've all had this situation, right? Very normal. And I really don't mind playing alone most of the time. I'm a bit of a loner. When Wrath of the Lich King rolled around, of course, the Death Knight. Look at it. Of course I had to have one. I worked so hard to finally reach level 55. Wrath of the Lich King, by the way, still not level 55. <laughs> Just say, <laughs> it's still not level 55. <laughs> and I did it. I had finally done it. I made my blood DK and then quit it 10 minutes later. I had no fucking clue how to do that area. 
I went back to my prop paladin. I still had never done a single dungeon. I still didn't know what a raid was. And when I gave up on my DK, I had met another nice person. Who said I should go to their mains realm and make a mage, join their guild. And they could guaranteed they would help me learn to play mage if I was struggling with a DK. So I did. And when my mage reached level 8, they quit playing the game entirely. And left me as the only person in the guild. I was a guild master. With just me in it. So instead of leveling something I didn't have a clue how to play. I took my mage and someone else in a journey. And they flew me to a spot that only they knew about. I had to be flown up high and dismounted to my death and be rezzed inside near Karazhan. But they got in through this wall through some kind of glitch. We used to go in there. Play with Tonka toys from the toy vendor. It was our secret hideaway. <laughs> it's walled off now, which makes me sad. Even if you do find a way in, you can't get out of the first room. No more Tonka toys in Karazhan. Now, at this point, I'm no doubt, because I did. I was wondering, why are, you, why are all these people doing this? Because it doesn't happen very often. It's very strange. Why are all these people trying to entice our author to come with them? Why are all these people trying to make friends with our author? And then it becomes clear, chat and listeners, it becomes very clear. During Mists of Pandaria, I was still a stand and shoot kind of girl. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of thirsty boys. A lot of thirsty boys. Who don't quite realize what's happening. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, yeah, he's struggling. He just started the game. What's your name? Oh, Exquisitina. It's a lovely name. You should come to my server. You should come to my server and I'll help you out. I'll help you out. How old are you, by the way? Oh, okay. Um, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Leave grandma alone, you perps. <laughs> Literal grandmother. Ah, shit. <laughs> it all becomes clear, these thirsty boys. <clears throat> During Mop, I was still a standard shoot kind of girl. As I only knew how to click on my spells with my mouse, which happened to be the only way I know how to move to. But doing both at the same time just doesn't work. You can't click and move at the same time. It just doesn't make any sense, boys. You're not thinking about it. Someone came along and decided that maybe, for me, the best feature of World of Warcraft would be pet battles. As I couldn't really PvP and I couldn't really PvE. I was definitely happy with achievements. I like achievements. And I'm the proud owner of all four celestial battle pets. Yeah? I'll be honest, I don't know very much about battle pets. <laughs> I just use Zufu's pet strategy website for PvE battles. And I do not do PvP battles. But I do have a lot of pets. I have a lot of them. And it may have taken me hours of trying and watching videos on how to do... Which piece of pet content? Which piece of pet content required videos, strategies, and guides? Hmm? Hmm? It may have taken me hours of trying and watching videos on how to do the plant versus zombies minigame to get the singing sunflower pet. <laughs> oh, I want to give you a hug. <laughs> Please come to like BlizzCon or something. Please go to BlizzCon or something. <laughs> Please. But I got it, yo. I got it. I had a friend who used to pop in on me once in a while at the ranch while doing my dailies for the Master of the Ways achievement. They come just to duel me so they could practice against my class and spec. And then they just went easy on me to get me more used to my abilities. I always look forward to seeing him, even though I never stood any chance of winning. I also figured out, wait for it, halfway through Mists of Pandaria, that if I kill things faster, this is some hard science now, 
If I kill things faster, I don't need to stop and heal myself so much as I'm not being attacked for as long. So I did the only logical thing. I changed from protection to retribution. Yeah? Big moves. And I have been a retribution paladin ever since. It was in Mr. Pandaria as well. I was given my second guild. Someone who had told me they were going to help me learn dungeons and had taken me to the Timeless Isle frequently to practice. So they should have known how, uh, you know, how good I am at the game. And they took me to a dungeon. I realized that I had been invited to their bank guild because I told them my bags were always full. And their solution was that I could put stuff in their bank. And the day after the dungeon fiasco where I failed hard, I logged on to find that I was the only person in the guild and he had removed me from friends list. Though I am grateful, I learned quite a bit from him as to what a dungeon was and I still use that bank to this day. For someone who likes to keep everything, it sure has come in handy. What do you mean by everything, Mike? What does that entail? Well, our author has been playing since the Burning Crusade. It is now Mists of Pandaria. Up until mid Mists of Pandaria. I'll just read it. I would like to, I like to put all my gold in the guild bank. Because I still believe that rogues could legitimately pickpocket me. And it was Legion before I met a rogue who informed me that you could not pickpocket actual players. You know what happened there, don't you? What's the emote? What's the emote that has caused that for like six years? For like six years, this person has been under the impression that rogues can steal from them. And you know the emote. You know the emote that has been spammed. Spammed at this person at one point probably six years ago that has made that happen yeah <clears throat> you know the one <sighs> during warlords of draenor i got better i got better at standing and shooting but one can only click so fast and not moving while doing that is a handicap i tell you and there was so much i couldn't do as i simply didn't understand what the game was doing at all Nice people tried to get me to use WASD to move. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, you might think it's easy to use this left hand. Right? For most of us, to use this left hand and to use this pristine device that comes with the PC. You might think that's easy to do, but no, because you don't have 1970s problems. Right? Right? You young books. You don't have 1970s problems. You see, at age eight, my father brought home a good toy. A manual royal typewriter. And he taught me to sit properly, hold my hands properly, and made me type the quick red fox jumped over the lazy brown dogs without looking at the keys. As that sentence contains every letter in the alphabet. And let me tell you, I can type 175 words a minute, motherfucker. But I cannot, I cannot make my fingers use the keyboard in a gaming fashion. <laughs> See, if you had 1970s problems, you'd know what's up. But you don't, because you're useless. <laughs> you're useless. I don't get it. So you have to use a keyboard like this, like some sort of, like, T-Rex, right? Like a T-Rex keyboard. This is what's happening. This is this is how we this is how we type. We can't wasda. We can't wasda like this. This is bad wasda. We can't do it. <laughs> we can't do it. <clears throat> I was never able to go to the timeless isle on my own. Or Tanan jungle. I can't do quests like the cage thingies in Tanaris. Legendary quests. Anything like that is just completely out of my reach. I did, however, learn to get a level 10 
up to Gallywick's Pleasure Palace without using a two-person mount. That's right, I did that. All you needed was a DK who has flying to duel and death grip you up the side of the mountain. I did this once, and it was so magnificent. And the Alliance did kill me while I was up there. Killed all of the NPCs repeatedly, but I just held hope. I held hope. And the best day I had, the best day I had, was jumping off the diving board, trying to land in that floaty pink thingy. You could use the space bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> running space bar over and over again. When Legion launched, we're up to Legion now. A lot of people were telling me that I needed to get a gaming mouse to help with the problem of standing still and clicking. Because I still had a two button mouse. Raise a Naga will fix it. <laughs> you do not still have a two-button mouse. No fucking way, man. So off to Best Buy I went. When I went to Best Buy, I stood there and I said, Salesman, come forth to me. I require what is known as Gaming Mouse. Do you have Gaming Mouse? The salesman said, we do have gaming mouse. I replied with, good, one gaming mouse, please. <laughs> Trying not to seem like a noob. I'll be honest, I did not actually know what a gaming mouse was. And I had no clue that there were a variety of gaming mice, right? There is simply gaming mouse. And it is the one you shall purchase. The salesman was very nice to me. He said, what do you want it for? <laughs> <laughs> I bet he did to the granny. Why do you want a gaming mouse? Is it for a youngster? Is it for somebody playing Fortnite? Does he do a weird dance? Give me a hint. Try and nail it down. Does the game look like cartoon? Or does it look like war? Which one is it? Let me figure it out. <clears throat> I told him for World of Warcraft. It is some is so supposed to somehow help me learn to play the game. His suggestion. Now, you're in this position, boys and girls. What is the solution? We have a grandma. She's the gamer. We, we didn't expect it, but there it is. And she needs Gaming Mouse to help with World of Warcraft. What is the, what is the solution? What is the solution? A Naga. Upsell this shit. Take her for everything she's worth. Naga. $500 mouse. Upsell and make my commission. The Naga Trinity. Oh, you noobs, man. I actually have one. This is the solution. This is what's going to get the job done. Yes, dude. All the clicks. Easy for you. Easy. In fact, it wasn't this one. This is the Orb Weaver. But it was the Razor Tartarus. Nice mouse, I know. But it, you, know why, you know why he sold it on being a mouse? It's got a little thumbstick. got a thumbstick it's got a little clicky thumbstick he pointed me to the razor tartarus and i'm eternally grateful for that even though it took me forever to learn some of the keys i am happy to say that i can now kind of move and fight i'm still not the best at it but the little joystick on the side is hard to control and suddenly find myself running into walls or off cliffs <clears throat> but i'm learning but i'm learning and so I was on my way to learning not to be a clicker. Even though I still look at the action bars to know when things are available to use. All right, we've got key bindings. She's better than some of you now. You just got outplayed by a grandma. All right, think about it. I know there's somebody watching who's a clicker clicker. Does this sound familiar? If that sounds familiar, you know who you are. Grandma's better than you, right? Yeah, get a fucking grip on yourself. Get a grip on yourself. She's got she's got game. She might be running off cliffs and shit, but she knows it. <clears throat> About halfway through Legion, I actually learned for the first time that you can just run through mobs you encounter while questing. You didn't have to fight everything that aggroed you. It wasn't going to kill you. 
I was introduced to your videos, to Icy Veins and other resources. And when my FAPUS went down to between six and eight again, it was time for another computer. All right, so we're at six or eight FPS. Sometimes my FPS goes up to eight. That's a good day. Other times down to six, kind of grim. But playable, for sure, playable. Console games have told me that's a decent FPS to have, actually. It was time for another computer. The third PC since I had started this game. I had to have another computer. My settings were so low, as <laughs> they were as low as they could go, and my FPS was so bad. I lagged so hard that people would just stand and wait for me to catch up. I couldn't see sparklies that I was supposed to click on. It was like being a bad player that was blind as well. So I bought myself, I have never heard of this in my entire life, an Omen gaming desktop. Ooh, an Omen gaming desktop. This sounds like fake Alienware. It is, it's with snide Alienware. <laughs> Yes, dude. Ooh, look at this. It's black and red. It must be good. Is it? Oh, it's Hewlett Packard. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's Hewlett Packard. No. Look how happy this guy is. Is he playing Diablo? <laughs> it looks a bit like Diablo. Is that Path of Exile? I'm not sure. One of them games. What the fuck is that cube thing? <laughs> <laughs> Build your own PC forehead, <laughs> idiots. All right, so we've uh, we've got a HP. I think that's the upgraded pavilion, right? It's the upgraded pavilion. But anyway, we're up, we're up, we're up there. The best decision I have ever made, aside from the Razor Tartarus. I also made friends with someone who streams Mythic Progression about this time. And it was the most awesome thing to put on my headphones and watch the raid on the screen and listen to their raid leader. I just knew I had to ha had to do this thing called raids. I needed to do it. One day while questing in Suramar on my priest, I saw a dis priest come through for the quest where the enemy is getting too close to our little cave. So we have to go and kill them. This dis priest pulled everything he could and killed them all and his health never went down. And he was never in danger of dying. It was one of the most incredible things I'd ever seen. I whispered him and asked, how have you done that? He asked, what? Question mark. <laughs> I replied, you pulled all the mobs and you didn't even take any damage. There was silence. I was about to give up and go away, figuring somehow he just thought I was yanking their chain. When he whispered me back, saying, you need to change your talents. I did what he said, and it was incredible. I didn't die anywhere near as much. I still struggle with stats and talents, but thank goodness for pawn. You use the standard pawn strings, don't you? <sighs> it's a start 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 what strings <laughs> standard pawn's better than no pawn i'll take it i'll take it i'll take it Okay. <clears throat> In the last half of Legion, I was able to do something I had never been able to do before. You might wonder what that was. I was able to finally complete the scenario to get into the next level of content. I was able to go to the Broken Shore, and then I eventually managed to get to Argus. Now, you might wonder... Why we have them ridiculous scenarios to access things like that. And I am here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there are some people who can't do it. And it's hard to imagine, but there we go. There we go. No bamboozle, no memeing. There we go. I could do the world quests. I killed some rares. And I even got to do the invasion points on Argus. For me, it was awesome. I had never been able to do what I had considered the hard content of WoW before. 
I learned how to gear up and started to learn how to do dungeons before Legion was over. Even being able to complete a Mythic Plus 8 on my Paliar DK. Now I suppose that you may think that skamaz and learned is a strong word. I managed to get through the dungeons because other people knew what was happening and it didn't really matter that much that I didn't know of. And all I did was just straight bad damage. I didn't use all of my abilities as I'd never even figured out what all of them were for because you can't get by you can't get by just questing without using st without you can get by just fine with questing without using all your abilities. Definitely not the best way to get through it, but it had been done and I'm here to say I met some other people who were in my age group who told me that if I put a character in their guild, they would teach me about how to do dungeons about my character so i did our first dungeon appeared the tank asked me if i could stun i told him i do have a stun but i need a second to figure out where i put it because i don't normally use it he said never mind and pulled then they just quit doing dungeons with me rather than helping me I managed to do EN normal by the end of Legion. I was walking on clouds, knowing that I had completed a raid. I know I wasn't any good. I did that raid while the Argus one was out, and I, it was so nerfed that even the village idiots like me could eke through it. But I had fun doing something I had never seen or been able to do before, even if I still didn't really have a clue. I have your Get Good for Christmas video series and so many more guides and videos by you and other people saved in a folder in my YouTube so I can go back and pick what I want to study and learn and how to get better so I can keep venturing further into harder content. It's so much more fun to run up to mobs marked with a Silver Dragon Elite symbol with both guns blazing and not have to wait for someone else to show up because I, I would die if I didn't. Now I've learned how to get gear, learned some key bindings and some UI stuffs, how to move a little bit and get out of things that will kill me, and a bit more about my class and specs, and now I can just charge in and take down those monsters. Basically, I'm getting better, even if just a little bit at the time. And now BFA has launched, and I recently learned how to make macros. How to import weak auras, such as yours, and I have discovered the awesome people at Perky Pugs. Thanks to them, I got to I got the Violet Spellwing mount. I don't even have that. Just at the end of Legion. Thanks to their learning raids. Oh, do I have that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> do I have that? <laughs> do I have that? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm still not good, don't get me wrong. I mess up all the time. But I go figure out how to keep getting a little bit better. The first time I stood in front of Zul, I had very I had very few macros and no clue what to do with this spell, Purify, a master spell. Now I have the appropriate macros and I'm getting it right, at least enough to get my way through normal. I do have that. Heroic Argus Mount. Okay, yeah. I learned well from you. I have your UI and weak auras and I bring flasks, potions, feasts, gems, enchants, and cauldrons. My girl, you can come to my raid. Fuck yeah, dude. I come prepared with everything except knowledge and ability. But, <laughs> but I have faith that if I keep trying, I'll eventually learn how to wow. Whew. I went the first time to do Zool on my Dis Priest and for the first time, and for the life of me, couldn't figure out who needed dispelling and what exactly was the difference between Master Spell, Dispel, and Purifies. I don't use those abilities out in the open world. I had no idea what to do with them. As you can imagine, they brought me in because I was a Dis Priest. And since I didn't know about Dispel, I was a fail. When it was over, two pulls later, I whispered a new friend I had made recently who plays healers and asked if they had a priest. And if they could explain, explain to me, what is this Dispel? I believe I confused them at first. They just started telling me to read the dungeon journal, forehead. But the words didn't mean anything to me. What are these words? What is this? I needed to know how I know who needs dispelling. How to know which spell to use and when. This is when I learned that the color of the unit frame changed, meaning certain things. I had figured it did. But I couldn't explain the color code. Where was the key? So he explained what I was trying to figure out and made more macros. And I went to queue for random dungeons to practice it. 
Amazingly, I got better at the dungeons. And when I went back the next week to get Zul, I did three of the dispels. The other healer told me that that as if it was a good thing. I don't know how many dispels we needed, but I'm sure three is not a good number. <laughs> oh, the naivety. The other healer's like, you did three dispels. <laughs> you did three. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes, dude. Yeah, big. <laughs> three is better than zero. You're getting there. You're getting there. I just like the, the innocence of it. I like the innocence. It's so fun. The next week, I went back and did a little better. I have so much fun doing raids and learning to work as a team to overcome and kill bosses. I can't wait until I eventually get to do a Mythic plus 10. Keep going. And at least be working on Heroic mode. All right, here you go. The plea. This is to you scumbags out there. I know it's difficult for people to understand me being so bad and not having a clue when I'm not really either stupid or doing things called trolling. <laughs> I'm not certain what qualifies as trolling, but I'm certain it is not a nice thing to do. Especially because my item level says I should know things that I really don't know and may wind up sounding like an idiot because I haven't learned all the words. I'm really not stupid or trolling. <laughs> my priest is apparently my main for the moment. Apparently, I like that. <laughs> apparently, it's my priest, I don't know. My priest is apparently my main for the moment and has an item level of 365. Geared up mostly from war fronts, world bosses, world quests, and the world quest chains. I am one of those whose item level says I should be better than I am. And know things I don't know, but without the gear I have, I couldn't be fearless at taking on the Silver Dragon Elite bosses all by myself. When you can't stay alive long enough. You don't get to even see, let alone figure out the mechanics. And I'm learning because of my item level, because I don't die as much while I'm learning. Thereby being able to actually see more of the mechanics, staying alive certainly helps with that. People expect me to be better because of my item level. And I actually have a head of the curve for Heroic Argus because I won a raffle for the mount. <laughs> to keep this item level in perspective, I see people all the time with a lower item level than myself who could do much better. I recently watched your video called something like Off With Their Loots. Uh, oh, that was the one where people were trying to punish everybody who was bad. Yeah, yeah. That's still going on to this day, by the way. If you get in a scuff M plus run, which is doomed for hours of your day and you leave, right? You should be banned from WoW for a year and you should have your fingernails removed, you piece of shit. You signed up, you should stay forever. <clears throat> I am begging you all, please don't take my loots away. I'm so bad that I need it to be there to be able to stay alive to learn. Just thought I would throw that in there. It's not true, by the way. Not true. I am going to counter that as much as I love you and you have a heart of gold. That's not true. It's not true. So I am one of the technologically challenged and of one of the older ladies that play this game. I have muddled my way through Azeroth, graduating from pet battles to actually being able to muddle my way through normal content raid. I may take a whole lot longer to get there, but I am getting there. And I refuse to quit. I want to learn enough to someday be in a guild to do progression raiding. I would settle for being on Team 10 right now just to be able to practice doing it a few times a week. I have way too much fun learning to do this content to work hard to get better at it. And the day will come. I will earn my own ahead of the curve achievement on my own volition. Mark my words. Thank you, Preacher, for being out there and being part of helping me to learn. A sincere thank you to all of you out there who bothered to help people learn how to get better at the game. I salute you all. I have no doubt that sometimes it takes the patience of Job. But I assure you it is all worth it in the end. And a Merry Christmas to you all. Keep going, Grandma. Keep going, Grandma. I do have to say, though, the gear isn't helping you very much. It might feel like it, but it's not. It's not. Focus on the class. Listen to me. Focus on the class. Practice with the class. And you, the gear will drift away. The gear is a crutch. It feels like it's helping you, but it's a real crutch. Trust me. Focus on the class. Focus on what it does. And you'll go much, much better. Trust me. You'll be going much faster. This learning curve, this goal of yours is a commendable commendable but focus on the class and then the gear will heighten everything else that's how it works that's how it works okay <laughs> delete his fake trying to pretend he knows okay <laughs> i am not i am not i am not okay let's let's zoom through this one wonderful story thank you for sharing that with us yeah don't worry about the gear my story of wow. 
Right, I need you guys to be good here. Can you be good for me? Huh? What do you think? Can you guys be nice? Yeah, it's a lovely story. It's an absolutely lovely story. Well worth a read. Okay. <clears throat> I want to be able to trust you guys. <laughs> All right, we need uh, Aether... Aetherian? I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, we need Lord Zetsua. Lord Zetsua. We need... Uh, a Rasto Shaman, which will be Lubo. Hello, Lubo? Lubo Castile. And we need a Lady Shadow Priest. Ooh. Uh, let's go with Esperi. Although, in brackets, it says Steve. <laughs> in brackets, it says Steve. All right, okay. <clears throat> Hi, Mikey. And to Andy, if he's there, he's not. And Emma, who's probably lurking somewhere behind you. She's feeding the children. I can hear it out of my right ear. And of course, you ever so kind and wonderful Twitch chat. Allow me to thank you. All of your watchers and story senders. Drama time has been my regular go-to section when I'm busy working on art. Ooh. Now then, I greet you from the small and far too hot island. Uh, land, not island. Of Israel. But I was born in Mother Russia. Mm -hmm. So I have a little bit of both in me. I've been thinking about writing to you for a while, but I can never work up the courage or the proper chronicle order of events. The last three years of my WoW life have been a blur or a lucid nightmare. You guys can decide. I would like your opinion, viewers of Drama Time. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'd like to start with some background. I first ran into WoW during Wrath of the Lich King some years ago and played on private servers back at the time. I couldn't afford my own real WoW. <coughs> I've played Wrath for a while until I dropped WoW and went to play other games. Went through all possible free online MMOs you can think of. <laughs> Pay to win. Of until I started working and finally convinced my mother to start WoW again. But this time on the real thing. So before you bring it up, yes, my mother is a PC gamer. It's a short story, but here it is. Mama used to hate me playing the PC. She was the sort of parent that would tell you you can only spend two hours on the PC and no more. And if you did, she'd just unplug the modem or the PC plug and hide it somewhere. It wasn't long before I started finding all her little hiding places in an attempt to defy her, to which she responded by putting passwords on the PC. Bitch. But her passwords were easy game. And I started cracking those or bypass them as well. And eventually, she was forced to give up and let me play my PC. Now, I understand her concern with the amount of hours I spent on this computer. But as a kid who migrated from Russia into a hateful age here in Israel towards our kind, I had no other escape, you see. I had no friends. Never cared to make any because I was the kid who sat at the very back of the classroom, near the wall or the window, and drew dragons and weebo shit on every book, piece of paper, or the table itself. I was always picked on in high school. I was never brave enough to stand up for myself. I was a weak girl. It was a miserable, lonely childhood. It was I wasn't the prettiest girl either. And I've always been picked on because of my weight. And before you assume, dear Twitch chat. Not overweight. To the contrary, I'm very, very thin. <laughs> I'm very, very thin. <laughs> I'm very, very thin. I was also an athlete up until I suffered a leg injury due to a failed surgery. But I won't say much about that because it's not important. Nobody actually did. <laughs> Nobody actually went, oh, oh, tubbo. Oh, what was, what was, what was that uh, girl? What was that girl that was telling us? Not thick. Not bubbly. 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 Anyway, I confined myself to my room, my online games and anime. This was the sort of person I was from then on. Just a regular PC geek. Eventually, my mother started taking an interest in the games I played. I didn't really realize it back then, but I do now. She was just as lonely as I was in this foreign country. And while she did have pals at work, they didn't really spend any time beyond that at home. And she worked at a factory. 
Work was hard, and the change of management they got at the time bred a lot of hatred due to major ass licking by some of the workers towards the new management. At some point, I joined her in the factory, so I saw it firsthand, and it was disgusting. So I started showing her games. She fell in love with Diablo, and then we played Diablo 2 until Diablo 3! And it was fun until it lasted. No memes. <clears throat> back to where I stopped. I suggested we go back to WoW because she also played some private servers with me in between all other MMOs and really fell in love with WoW. She said no because WoW costs all the pennies. Basic WoW, all expansions. This was what at the time in subscription. To which I answered, I fucking got this, mum. I fucking got this. I'll buy them both and myself. Just come and play on live with me. She agreed, of course. And between time to time, even now, she shoves money at me to help me pay for her subscription. At which I say, no, 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 mama. I made a promise and I intend to keep it. She will enjoy WoW for as long as she's able to play. No expenses. <laughs> I know you're against such, thi such things, preach. Buying WoW for others. What? For your mother? What are you talking about? What do you think I am? Why would I be against? No, shut up. Why would I be against you buying WoW for your mother? What is this impression? Really? Honestly, are you out there going, well, I like Preach, but he like, he, he actually, I'm pretty sure he hates the fact that I pay for WoW for my mother. Really? <laughs> really? The only time that has ever come up is when thirsty boys go out and some girl goes, Oh, I can't afford BFA. I'll definitely give you Snapchat if I could have it, though. That's what we don't like. That's abuse. Buying a game for your mother is fine, right? I am not this tyrant. Triggered. Okay, so here's the justification. Let's read this properly, right? Sure, why not? Let's throw me under the bus. Sounds fun. I know you're against such things, Mike. Buying WoW for others. But see it from my perspective. I'll try. It's going to be hard to understand why you would buy WoW for your mother. But let's stick with it, right? We're a very poor family. There's only two of us. Recently two because my brother has his own family now. Used to be three of us. It was her, myself and my brother. Neither of us had any real life friends. And I know it sounds pathetic. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh, chat. This is all on you more than anything, right? But I never got used to Israel. Even after 22 years of living here, I still feel like I don't belong. Well, don't, don't we all feel bad? No, piss on you, right? Don't try and put this on us. We didn't make Israel. We didn't move you there. And no one here resents you buying wild for your mother. We're innocent, right? Every single last one of us here right now. No, we are not going to shoulder that burden. We're not. We're going to smugly sit here. And be happy with the fact that this is nothing to do with us. This is on you. Right? So, no. No. We say no, don't we, chat? We say no. 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 You're not going to make us feel bad. Anyway, onwards. <clears throat> we started while on the real servers about six months before Legion was out. You guessed it. Warlords of Draenor, Hellfire Citadel. <laughs> An AFK farm at this point. I know everyone hates this expansion. Not anymore. <laughs> but I loved every bit of my time during then. And why? My first thought, and I shit you not, Mikey, was, oh my god, the quests are working. <laughs> big. It's true. That's big. That's big. <laughs> That's big. Please can we have one back? <laughs> Beg of you. Give me one back so I can not have to log in for shit outside of raid. Please. I beg of you. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a bit of why I thought this. On private service, seventy percent of the quests didn't work or didn't work uh, or didn't work as intended. There are almost no cutscenes, no fluid passage of quest lines. They just abruptly happen or end. NPCs don't talk the way they do in the world sometimes. And well, every quest you do is like playing roulette. Will this work or not? So, to my absolute amazement, all the quests were working, and for the first time in my WoW life, I felt real immersion in the WoW universe. <laughs> Thankfully, I had experience from my private servers, so I was no noob. I learned fast, and soon I was to speed up and everything, speed up with everything, and raiding Hellfire Citadel. That raid was a blast. <sighs> hmm. 
One of my favorite fights was actually Zul Harak. Very cool fight. Very visually cool. Uh, reminder, that's the guy who does the foul and void attacks for you plebs out there. And if you mix the debuffs, a kaboom. <laughs> boss go boom. Oh, uh, uh, the other boss I really loved was Shadow Lord Iskar. I cannot count the amount of times I wiped on those with my guild, but they were insane fun to do. Really? Iskar's the throwy orb guy, right? I'm thinking the right one. Or am I wrong? Isn't that the throwy orb guy? Can you press, press your fucking extraction button or no? Mm, how do I? Speaking of which, this is the first guild I was in since joining WoW on the real servers. I don't remember the name at this point, but I do remember it was in the EU realm. It was a good guild with a small group that ran HFC Heroic every week with full success. We farmed it up until the very end of one, and through half my time there, I was the second tank. My main role was a DPS. Jesus, fuck. Russian girl tank? Boom. Yeah? Step off, comrade. Get fucked. Yeah? Don't talk my fucking boss. Back then... <clears throat> But my main role was DPS. Back then I played a Frost DK. Of course you did. Of course you did. I later chased Blurred because we needed a second tank. I don't remember why one of them went into active though. Legion came. We didn't get our tank back so I was left to tank. By that time I was in the guild for around 8 or so months when Emerald Nightmare was released. That's where my Legion experience went completely fucking scuff. We got through Nathendra without a problem, and then we went for Ursoc, and that's where the wipes began. Oh, I don't know the difficulty. Myself and the other tank could not coordinate the stacks properly due to the guy never speaking, ever. Sometimes simply not surviving the simple attacks, but the blame, of course, was on me, because I am a blood DK. And that was genuinely the reason my raid leader gave for why both tanks died. Of course it's your fault the warrior died. You're a blood DK. Forehead. <laughs> now for all those who don't remember, back then Blizzard decided it was a brilliant idea to remove Icebound Fortitude from the blood DK tanking kit because that is a Frost DK skill, I do remember. And it does, fit, does not fit in with the blood DK class fantasy. Anyway, long story short, I was replaced by another tank who I later found out was the leader's rl friend and that we we're planning to bring him in for a while now and kept it from me until the raid tier arrived the guy was playing warrior by the way i think you remember how warriors were during that tier uh they got very good at the end i remember that who needed healers with warrior tanks anyway they took no damage yes they did yeah <laughs> we had a, a warrior re a guy re-roll to warrior at scenarius fun fact for you there i left the guild Feeling absolutely betrayed and went to play my warlock instead. I was guildless for a while. Still bitter, twisted and alone. I decided that this was the perfect time to join a mythic guild. <laughs> that sounds so wrong. I'm bitter, fueled by hatred. Ah, I'm a mythic raider. That's what this is. I feel it inside me. The bitterness, the loneliness. The, it's everything I need to be a mythic raider. <sighs> Seething. It was fun while it lasted. We did 9 out of 10 mythic, lol. I kept wiping on 5% on Gul'dan right before the Illidan phase. Oh, we wiped at 5% on Gul'dan for 3 weeks and never managed to get cutting edge. Oh, that feels bad, man. Uh, before the next raid tier hit. During that time, I swapped again to a hunter and then again to a feral. Oh my god, we got a class hopper, boys. I settled with the scratch scratch, though. Through a lot of benching, because my DPS wasn't good, even though some of the boss, even through some of the bosses, and eventually after TOS hit live, I left the mythic world, looking for a new time, deciding that for me, now that some happiness was returning, it was time for heroic. <laughs> no longer fueled by hatred. I came to the conclusion that Mythic was too stressful and full of dickheads. Maybe because I was in a rather stressful environment with the guild I was in. I don't know. So I decided heroic content is for me. Despite me finding it extremely easy. That's when I ran into the guild of our story. What is the guild called? 
Give me a name for the guild. Finally, towards what seemed to be the slow ending of Legion, I finally started experiencing the expansion properly. I quickly got to know all the people in this guild. There weren't many, but they were all welcoming. The fart knockers would always help each other with Mythic Plus. Our raids were full of bants, laughing, teasing, jokes. During progression, clearing heroic took us a month or two into the tier, each tier. It wasn't the fastest, but it was solid. It was warm, cozy, comfortable, healthy. Our only downside at the time was Aetherian. This dude was playing a prop pally. Now, Aetherian's a nice guy, right? We're all nice guys. Doesn't talk too much, but was always there to help whenever needed, except for Mythic Plus. He doesn't tank Mythic Plus. Go fuck yourself. He did most of his tanking job well, but he was a bit slow. Mentally. He said he needed a grace period for every boss. More than a handful of wipes to understand what his job was. But we joked about it, right? <laughs> uh, never really held it against him. However, things started to get spicy when we moved on to Heroic Antorus. Coven of Shavara specifically. For two weeks of wipe on the coven, Aetherian did not realize that he was supposed to stand in the white circles during Darkness Storm. None of us could believe what we were hearing when he finally told us on the two weeks of wipes. He just said, Oh, I didn't know I was supposed to stand in those during the storm. I thought tanks are alright. <laughs> the face palming was real. We killed the Shavaras and after completing the quest to unlock the doors, Agrimar. We never killed them again. What do you want? I'm in the middle of a story. Get out. Rude. 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 I'll be out in a sec. Don't worry. We skipped the coven every raid. And Taurus was done. BFA was being released soon. And about a month pre-release, we started gaining population in the guild. Roles were being changed around and new names I'd never seen before were popping up. Some of them were returning players that quit after Nighthold, or so I was told. And one of those was Lord Zetsua. A shadow... Oh, I think this is the girl, actually. Esperi. A shadow priest who joined a mythic guild and was now returning to the fart knockers for a reason that we found out later. Drama. Except that she was the only one who quit said guild for that reason. There were others that came to us from that same mythic guild later on just due to inactivity. With BFA out, I rushed to 120 because I already knew the Alliance quest lines. I played them on the best beta. And as soon as I hit 120, I started the gearing. I asked guildies who wanted to join but never got a reply from anyone. This is about the time to mention that Ethereum was asked to give up his tanking spot due to his learning difficulty in raids. He's not slow IRL, by the way. I want to be clear on that. I felt bad for him. He tanked for us for so long. But I also thought it would be a great time to go back to my blood DK. So I was gearing as a tank. And you know how it is? insta Q, Easy game. Easy life. I found myself at 310 in a matter of one to two days after BFA launched, ready to do mythic dungeons. But my guild was nowhere to be seen. So I leveled and geared alone. And one of my guildies later joined me as soon as he caught up. His name was Lord Zetsua, and he's a resto shaman. I helped him gear as soon as he hit 120, and we were practically inseparable for the following one to two weeks. Heroics, mythics, keys, as many as we could. Every time we did, he asked for three deeps from the guild to join us, and not a single one. I was starting to get frustrated, because a few days later, I saw some of the guildies complain about slow queues, never having tanks around, and how the guild was being unfair to the DPS. We had 20 plus people online every day since BFA launched for a solid two months. And this message fucked me off. I started getting restless about this and then I noticed that the same few names, always in the same dungeons, and when I finally lost my patience and asked why nobody ever joins me, or Lords at Zua, the reply I got was, It's not that we don't want to join your group, 
We're simply not used to having two tanks doing M+. Now, it's true. Atherian helped with things, but wouldn't do dungeons with the guild. It was only our other tank, Lubo. Our guild master and main tank. So now there was me, a second tank, who's actively gearing. It felt weird to them not to just wait for Lubos for when their dungeon queue was ready. I called bullshit. But I didn't say anything. I kept it all internalized. By the time we started raiding all deer when it came out, there was an obvious gap in the guild. Five people. Lubo, Esperi with three others, same names all the time, always doing keys together, especially high keys, and then everyone else in the guild, either pugging keys or just not doing them at all. I was amongst those who had stopped doing Mythic Plus altogether. I got sick and tired of it. Because Lord Setsuwa and myself always had to pug DPS. And I'm sure you and your chat can agree that pugging for M+, is a disaster. I had heard that about BFA. Time went on and I noticed a few others complaining about this now. The same few people being in the clicky group, all doing their dungeons together, never helping anyone else. I stopped coming to our Discord during raids. I quickly found out that when I was there, Asperi was a super co cocky, elitist, and no nosy bitch. She's the sort of person who doesn't shut up and always loves to point out everyone's little mistakes. In fact, it got as bad as her trash-talking our new recruits who were in all day for the very first time and died because no one had explained what to do. Of course, hearing a Sperry, they never asked. Girl power. Recently, we started doing Mythic all day because Heroic is on farm. And that's where it really hit off. It got so bad that this week's Mythic raid consisted of 50% pugs. And they only stayed for mother and left. Regardless of that, Lubo decides he wants to make a mythic team. While keeping our heroic team separate. So now we're going to create two tiers of player. Mythic team, heroic team. Heroic, casual friendly. Casual friendly. Mythic though, only for the serious. Only the brave. Only the hardcore. And they're going to come up with a list of requirements to be a part of Team Mythic. I am not going to join in with Mythic Group. I do not agree with what is happening here. I would like to ask for you and your chat's opinion on this. I have been in this guild since TOS launch. I have great memories, good friends, steady progress, but now I only log in for heroic raid night. And maybe once more during a week for a select juicy emissary chest. The guild doesn't feel special. It feels like a pug that is skilled enough to do heroic and two bosses in mythic. And I feel that the only reason I stay here is just to have an easy ride in heroic. It's reliable, guarantees me ahead of the curve every time I want it. And as for friends, I feel like I have none here. I cannot point to a single person and say with confidence that he or she is the reason I'm staying. I thought I had friends here, but ever since the Sperry and a few others joined with their attitude, I feel like it's dead. Just raids, progress, rude comments. Even Lord Zutsu isn't talking to me anymore. He joined up with the elite because they needed a healer sometime and now he's in oh no the friends got sucked in <laughs> they needed a healer <sighs> welcome to the easy ride team hey i don't want to leave i have some misguided sense of duty that still keeps me here but i am truly straining to find a reason to stay i'm clinging to something that isn't there anymore and i'm too scared to be guildless and all alone again but WoW doesn't look that fun anymore when I play alone. What should I do? How should I rekindle my WoW passion? What is the way of doing it? Mm. Mm. There are lots of heroic mythic guilds at the moment. Especially the 2 out of 10s. You have lots of choice. Don't worry about it. And it's just a bad guild. That's it. That's it. There's nothing more to it. And there are so many of you in this scenario. Do you know how many... Per realm, go and check, go and check right now. How many guilds on your realm are two out of whatever mythic, however many bosses are in fucking uh, all the uh, nine, whatever. Go and look how many there are. All struggling for members. There's like 10. <laughs> 10 guilds all in exactly the same scenario, all trying to be the surviving one at the end and not going anywhere. 
Just go. Eight. There you go. Eight. Two out of eight. Loads of them. Loads of them. And they're all scrabbling. Swapping members. Moving it backwards and forwards. Loads of opportunity. Don't worry about it. Guilds die. It's fine. We live. My guild died last expansion. It's all good. We're fine. We got on with it. We got on with it. There's my advice for all of you out there in the same position where you're in these shitty guilds that are doing like two out of eight, losing members every week, gaining members, losing them, gaining them, losing them. And it just reinforces that coin. You can't blame them, by the way. You can't blame them. Solid team and then this rotating flux liquid constantly changing area of the guild is just going to push the long-term guys closer. That's all that's going to happen there. Move on. It's fine. Try and go for something that's like three out of eight, four out of eight. Yeah? Don't go to another two out of eight. Don't do that. Well, there you go. That brings us to the end of drama time for today. Our heart of gold and our heart of cold from America to Russia in five easy steps. But ladies and gentlemen, I will be back on Monday. There may be something over the weekend just to keep up with souls because we do have three more games to finish before Christmas and we are on the seventh as it is. We've got nearly two in the bag. We've got Dark Souls 1 to wrap up. But we're in a good place to speed through that as it is now. Uh, and then we're moving on. Thank you so much for tuning with us. Love you all. Be good. Have a great weekend. Bye, everybody.